Hi everyone, Josh Harrison here and welcome to this, the first video of two in which we address the question, how to get started in property. And this video is really borne out about from a number of experiences I've had and conversations all around, hi Josh, I'm interested in getting started in property, where do I begin? I'm gonna break it down into three sections, starting with have an objective, or as I should say, have objectives. Now, what I normally, hear from people is think of a figure, monthly figure or annual figure that you'd like to have and then use that as a starting point upon which you base your business plan. In my experience, I would recommend people do something slightly differently. I would say think of an emotional state or emotional states in which you enjoy being in. So for instance, I enjoy feeling loved and being loved or I enjoy being excited or I enjoy being amused. Think of an emotional state that you'd like to be in. And then go one step back and think, well, what activity, what do I have to do which generates that emotional state? So for instance, if I like to be loved, I like to be with my family and be with my children. I like, might like to be on holiday with them, camping and sitting around a fire and roasting marshmallows. That makes me feel happy. Or for instance, what objectives and experiences might you have? If you're an adrenaline junkie and you're seeking that emotional experience, then I would like to be jumping out of aeroplanes or owning fast cars. You get the idea. What activity do you have to participate in that generates that positive emotional state? And then go one final step back from that and say, OK, well, what is the financial outlay required for me to participate in that activity or to own those objects and do those experiences that's going to lead me to an emotional state? So I call this have an emotional objective that has a financial price tag. Have an emotional objective that has a financial price tag. So what is the finance you need to fund an activity to have an emotional experience? That is what's going to power you and drive you through in terms of your business. So that, number one, is your objective. That's your end goal. Next is take stock. Now, you, oh, I often hear it. Um, said in property worlds, in property you need time, money and skill, or time, money and knowledge. And I absolutely agree, you do. However, I don't think there's perhaps enough thought given to the order in which those things are required. See, I don't think you first of all need time. What you actually need is knowledge. You need information upon which you take activity. And I liken this to the idea of going on a holiday. You wouldn't just turn up at the airport and think, well, where am I going to go now? Hmm, well, Mexico sounds nice. But I haven't got any belongings. I've got no clothes. I have not, no currency. I haven't even got a passport. I don't know how long I'm just going to stay for. You, you've done it all in the wrong order. Have an objective in mind. Work out what you're going to do and when, for how long, two weeks holiday, what you're going to take with you. Build your knowledge, be prepared, and then go on holiday. Take the activity. So knowledge is critical. So how much knowledge do I have? If you're gonna do single buy to let property, you're gonna need money and you're gonna need houses, money to buy the houses, and then you're gonna to need to rent them out. So how much of that process do you know? How much don't you know? What you don't know is you put down here, things I don't know. How much time do you got? It's pretty easy, two hours, evenings and weekends, oh, I don't know, six hours on a Saturday, work out your time available, and also just write down how much money you've got. I've got 2,000 pounds, I have 10,000 pounds, 50,000 pounds, whatever it is, how much money have you got? Where are you now? Then the next thing you're gonna do is plug the gaps in relation to these three things. So what I don't know, and I would start with that, start learning, start knowing. Again, I've mentioned this before, don't get completely, you don't have to know everything about everything about single buy to let family property investment, you have to know a, a lot. So you get to a point where you're well informed enough to start taking some meaningful action. If I haven't got any time, you might want to work I think about working with, for instance, sources who can bring use their time to bring you property opportunities for you to then um, put your money in, uh, for instance, but you need to plug your gaps. So what are your knowledge gaps? What are your time gaps? And what are your financial gaps? And I'll give you just two tips in terms of uh, plugging gaps. I would recommend you get well informed. Three things like, of course, this YouTube channel. 
Um, but also, I would read books, good old-fashioned reading of books. Um, I'm going to give you three suggestions in a minute. Doesn't matter which one you take or none. By the way, I'm absolutely not affiliated. I get no no form of reward and payback in any form whatsoever, to be absolutely clear. Uh, three books that you might want to read at some point is um, Dominate Your Ground by Mark Ianson. It is more of a trading perspective, but very helpful in terms of finding property opportunities. Read sections of that many times. Um, Successful Property Letting by a guy called David Lawrenson and How to Make Money in Buy to Let. Also a good book, really focusing just on buy to let. And probably one of my favourites, um, 44 Most Closely Guarded Property Secrets. Um, the very first book I read was um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I just give them that copy, uh, I've lent that copy out, so I haven't got it to show you. So I would recommend reading books, watching YouTube channels. I'd also recommend buy one book, buy it second hand, I would recommend and read the entire book before you buy your next one. The danger is you can go away and buy 15 property books and in a year, 15 property books are just taking up space in your home. Genuinely, it can happen, I've done it. So buy one book, read it all the way through. The other thing I would do in terms of acquisition of knowledge is I would just get a diary. In fact, this is, this is my, I don't know, my fourth diary um, or, or, or book. And what I do is I have two pens, two different colors, black and red, a bit changed, but I take two different colours and I write down all my questions as I read and as I watch things. Just write them down. Question, 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 question. And then I pose those questions to people I meet, either online or in forums, my mentor, or other property investors I come to know, and I ask the questions and I write down the answers. But what I also do is I take the same question and ask several people the same question because there really is wisdom in the proverb that says, in the multitude of counsellors, there is safety. So if you garner a whole range of responses to your questions, the likelihood is you're going to be very well informed and you're not going to miss things. Um, and, and therefore, on your basis, you can take um, informed action. So knowledge is first, plug your gap. If you need more time, think about cutting out things like watching videos, Netflix, binge watching. You'd be surprised how many hours go by in a week on our screens. Bump it into doing something more profitable, perhaps. And money. Money is the least of your obstacles. It might think like the biggest one. I haven't got any money. If you are well informed and you have time or you can work with people that have time, you can always borrow money from people who are willing to lend to sensible people who are going to give them a good return. Understand where what you want to achieve, understand where you are now, and then think about plugging the gap. Next video, we're going to talk about what actual physical activity you might do to move you on from this point. So stay tuned for that one. That's it for this one. My name is Josh Harrison. As always, thank you ever so much for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.